now my charms are all overthrown. And what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands, with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all fault, as you from crimes would pardon me. Let your indulgence set me free. The final words of The Tempest, widely accepted as William Shakespeare's last play in his own right. Some commentators romantically perceive Prospero the magician as Shakespeare himself, and the epilogue to The Tempest as the playwright's valediction to the stage. But who was William Shakespeare? People from all over the world make the pilgrimage every year to Shakespeare's hometown, Stratford-upon-Avon, to celebrate the anniversary of the great man's birth. He's revered by stars of stage, screen and television. He's the national poet and man of the millennium. But did the Glover son from the Warwickshire market town actually pen the plays which bear his name? And where does fact end and legend begin? Here we examine the cases of the four protagonists who it's claimed were responsible for the world's finest plays. Shakespeare himself, Francis Bacon, Christopher Marlowe, and Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford. All the people who question Shakespeare's authorship are crackpots, frankly. Though I am convinced that Shakespeare, the man from Stratford, was intimately involved with the plays and with the running of this theatre behind me, I'm not convinced that he wrote the plays. The person who wrote them could not have been William Shakespeare, Stratford or Neven, and they were, didn't write themselves, someone wrote them. And I think that Christopher Marlowe is the only eligible person. If it could be proved that Edward de Vere were the author, then you would find that the public would immediately castigate the Stratfordians for having held on to such a ridiculous theory for so long. A week or so later, May the 30th, 1593, Marlowe met his end, or so the history books tell us. He spent the day at Eleanor Bull's home at Deptford in southeast London. Three other men were present. Ingram Fraser, the personal assistant of the Secretary of State, Sir Francis Walsingham. Robert Poley, a government agent who delivered important letters to the courts of Europe on behalf of the Queen and Nicholas Skerries, who also undertook work for Walsingham, even though he was a con man. In fact, all three were shady characters whose honesty was questionable. After what was to be Marlowe's Last Supper, the four of them drank together, and everything appeared convivial, until it was time to pay the bill. According to the coroner's report, a row broke out over who was going to pay. That seems extraordinary when you consider Marlowe had a wealthy patron, and was never known to be short of money. The plot of Deptford is so intricate and so extraordinarily clever, in fact. But it left Marlowe with a tainted reputation, because he was presented as someone who was um, aggressive, who had hit Fraser from behind his back with his own dagger and chop chop on his head, you know, just tuneful scalp wounds um, over the question of settling the bill. After a struggle, Fraser dealt Marlowe a fatal blow. But why did Foley and Skerries just sit there and not help? And could Fraser really have inflicted a knife wound which would have resulted in instantaneous death? as the coroner's report said. 
Fraser was acquitted of killing Marlowe, testifying that he'd done it in self-defense. Some people argue that Thomas Walsingham engineered Marlowe's supposed murder and substituted the body of a sailor or a prisoner who'd gone missing. In fact, Marlowe owed his life to Walsingham. Almost 400 years after Shakespeare's death, theatrical companies are forever looking for new ways to present the Bard's works without altering the text. The mystery of who wrote the plays may continue for another 400 years. Those who are searching for the truth, though, don't have an ulterior motive. Everyone I've met to do with the authorship inquiry on all sides are all coming from a love of Shakespeare and Shakespeare's work. None of them come from a place of wanting to debunk or do any harm to his work. Their, their love is intense, and anyone who loves Shakespeare is a friend of mine. So who did write the plays? Was it William of Stratford, the incomparable genius who left no books in his will? Was it the secretive Francis Bacon, who feared his life was in danger, so he used a front man? Did the loudmouth secret agent Christopher Marlowe fake his own death and write the plays while living abroad? Or were the plays penned by the scandalous Edward de Vere, and they're even older than we thought? As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. We'll never know unless someone produces conclusive evidence about the real author. Until then, the magic of Shakespeare remains, even if we don't know whether he was born great, achieved greatness, or had greatness thrust upon him. <laughs>